He regards himself as an ambassador for Chinese martial art, teaching all who will listen about the ways of the Chinese masters. Now, you told me earlier today that karate and uh, jiu-jitsu are not the most powerful of the best forms of uh, oriental fighting. What is the most powerful of the best form? Well, <clears throat> it's bad to say the best, but uh, <laughs> in my opinion, I think Kung Fu is pretty good. Can you tell us a little bit about Kung Fu? Well, Kung Fu is originated in China. It is the ancestor of karate and jiu-jitsu. It's more of a complete system and it's more fluid. By that I mean it's more flowing. There is continuity in movement instead of uh, one movement, two movement, and then stop. I see. What's the difference between a Kung Fu punch and a karate punch? Well, a karate punch is like an iron bar. Whack! A Kung Fu punch is like an iron chain with an iron ball attached to the end and it go wang and it hurt inside. Okay. Lee has studied a system of Chinese Kung Fu for the past nine years called Wing Chun and is considered one of the art's most talented and articulate exponents. His teacher in this art has been an elderly Hong Kong Chinese master by the name of Yip Mon. Despite his proficiency in this style of Kung Fu, his study of philosophy has caused him to question. And now he begins to question why most martial artists, Chinese and otherwise, seem more concerned with preserving tradition than with looking more deeply into the matter to penetrate through to the ultimate truth of martial art. Moreover, Lee has begun to develop his own method of Kung Fu, which he describes as non-classical in nature and which takes as its core the principles of economy of motion, simplicity, and directness. All right, for instance, you will read it in the book, in a magazine and everything, that when somebody grabs you, you will first do this and then this and then and then and then and then thousands of steps before you do a single thing. Of course, this kind of magazine would uh, teach you to be feared by your enemies and admired by your friends and everything. But uh, in Kung Fu, it always involves a very fast motion. Like, for instance, a guy grabbing your hand. It's not the idea to do so many steps. Step him right on the instep. Do let go. This is what we mean by simplicity. Same thing in striking and in everything. It has to be based on a very minimum motion so that everything would be directly expressed one motion and he's gone doing it gracefully not to go ah yelling and jumping all over him but to do Excuse me. both the american and chinese martial art communities resent his iconoclasm for such a young man to stand up against thousands of years of tradition and venerated authority is considered a direct threat to the status quo and its entrenched power base prior to uh, bruce's coming uh to this country, uh, you know, Kung Fu was was alive in most all the Chinese community, but uh, there was nothing taught to outsiders, basically. And Bruce came along, and and with that basis of uh, trying to create equal equality amongst all people, regardless of race, uh, he chose to you know to let anybody into his school, regardless of what color or race they were, as long as he knew what was what was in their heart was good and positive. Why he he took them in, and uh, like when he was down in San Francisco where the Chinese community was much more uh, uh, like being in uh, China. Uh, they, they, they took exception to it, and he had to fight his way out of it. In Oakland, he received a challenge from the San Francisco Chinese martial arts community, um, and the challenge read that Bruce, if he were to be defeated in this challenge, would have to cease teaching Caucasian or non-Chinese students. And the Chinese martial artist came over from San Francisco to Bruce's studio in Oakland, and a very formal challenge took place. I was present there. In fact, I was eight months pregnant with Brandon, and James Lee was there. And this fight with this Chinese martial artist lasted about three minutes consisted of a lot of running where the Chinese martial artist took off and started running around the room and Bruce was pursuing him before Bruce finally got a hold of him and took him down to the floor and made him give up. And the um, 
But after the challenge ended with the Chinese martial artists being soundly defeated and they all went away, Bruce won the right to teach anyone he wanted to. By February of 1967, Lee has three schools operating in Seattle, Oakland, and Los Angeles that teach his own interpretation of Kung Fu, based on his own investigations into the ultimate truth of unarmed combat. However, by now, the young man is openly critical of the traditions and limitations he sees as inherent in the martial arts as they're currently being practiced in America. He believes they lack a solid grounding in reality, consisting of rehearsed self-defense routines that are employed in predictable and patternized rhythms. He notes that real combat is spontaneous, not rehearsed, and is made up of irregular or broken rhythm that a martial artist cannot anticipate, only respond to. Even the championship karate tournaments of the era are non-contact affairs, settled not on knockouts, but on an accumulation of points awarded for blows that never touch an opponent. A victory is determined by a team of judges who conclude which combatant would probably have hurt the other combatant the most had contact been allowed. Lee has no use for such styles of pseudo-fighting, which he calls organized despair and dry land swimming. Lee's criticism of the arts can be attributed in part to his background in Hong Kong, which consisted not of non-contact karate tournaments, but full contact street fights and challenge matches fought on Hong Kong rooftops. When not fighting against proponents of different styles of gung fu on rooftops, Lee had also fought frequently against opponents who had been armed with knives and chains. In such real-world encounters, reveries and judges were not necessary. Rather than participating in non-contact karate tournaments, which he considers little more than glorified games of tag, Lee instead devotes himself to devising a more scientific approach to unarmed combat. His research leads him to the science of Newtonian physics and the techniques and principles of European fencing and Western boxing, where efficiency, not tradition, are the touchstones of both disciplines. Lee's research causes him to understand that the only litmus test of a combative technique's worth is whether or not it can be landed effectively on an opponent. Anything that's ornamental is discarded from his style. He retains only those techniques that he himself has determined to be practical in real self-defense situations. Lee is the first martial artist in North America, if not the world, to have his students don boxing gloves, headgear, and body protectors and spar all out. Nothing is rehearsed, no punches are pulled, and full contact, reality-based martial art is the order of the day. In 1967, Lee introduces the concept of full contact sparring at the International Karate Tournament in Long Beach, California.